Hi YouTube, in this tutorial, we're gonna add a filter to our Webflow CMS collection. Now, in my case, it's a blog. It can be any other collection that you want and you can add dynamic filters to them. We're gonna use the FinSuite attributes. This is a great free resource that you can use to add filters on your Webflow project. So let's get to it. So we're gonna build on top of the blog that we created yesterday, the multilingual blog. Since we already created some categories uh, CMS and we referenced it in our blog post CMS, we can now use that category CMS to filter through this uh, blog. So let's set this up. These are the links that came from the untitled UI template and we wanna change that to be uh, dynamic, pulling from the category CMS. So let's do that. So the first thing we do is go to this parent element, the component element, and we'll add a collection. And this collection will be the categories collection, which is gonna pull from that source. We're gonna add it on top of the menu here. Um, or actually, let's add it inside the menu. And then here, we're gonna get this link. So I'm gonna get this link, add it here. And then I wanna keep this view all link as well. I'm gonna keep it uh, to be the first link and I'll delete all the rest. So now I have the view all, which is a static link and the rest are the dynamic collection links. So let's add this, let's call it to a blog filters menu and we'll make this into flex. And now we can connect the text to the name of the category, sorry. So now you can see they're pulling the right names if you view them. So we have view all and then all the categories that are in our CMS. So now that we have this ready, we can start connecting it to the FinSuite tool. So if we go to the FinSuite website, the FinSuite attribute website, I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description below. And uh, you can see the step-by-step -step guide on how to install this FinSuite filters. First, you will need to get this CDN script. So let's copy this and let's go to the page. And this is basically what calls the library to work. So this is the library for CMS filters and that's what we will need. All right, next we will see what's the next step. Now required for Miriam setup, we need these uh, attributes to be set up. The first one is identifying what's the list that we wanna filter through. So in our case, it's this list. So we can go to the list element and add the custom attribute here. And this will be value list. As you can see here, value list. Next, we want the filters. In this case, the filters, they have to be inside a form element. So only use one form. So we need a form element to add these filters inside. This can be easy. So we can just go to the parent element. So we can go to the component and we can add a form. So we can get this form here on the top and we can delete all these and just add our menu inside the form block. And then we're gonna add the attribute. So this will be filters. And as you can see here, this is the name of the attribute and this is the value that we need. This video is video 15 of the 100 days of Webflow journey. So if you're not familiar with that uh, series, do check it out. You're gonna love the content that is there. Now let's add some filters to our blog. Next is the identifier. Now we set up the filters, we set up the collection. We need the identifiers that we wanna filter through. So what filters through what? So in our case, we want this to be the identifier. Now, if you read on this, you can see that the filter UI needs to be one of these. So either a checkbox label, a radio label, select, or a text input field. In our case, they are normal links, so we can change them into, let's say, checkbox. So let's get a checkbox or actually a radio because I won't just want to be selected. So if it's a checkbox, you can have more than one selected. And if it's a radio, only one can be selected at a time. So we'll go for radio and then we're going to name this uh, categories. Now we're going to get this style. I'm going to get this style to add it here so that these match and then this radio button i'm gonna set it to be style custom and then i'm gonna hide it all together and i'm gonna delete this old link and here maybe the text can be bold and we're gonna remove these default spacings i don't want any spacings here another one here so this is zero and this is because uh, radio buttons come with default spacing 
Now we're going to go to the text and we're going to start adding the identifier. So we're going to get the identifier attribute and we will add this to the text in the radio button. So just like that. And this here, we can name the value whatever we want. In our case, it's going to be categories. We'll just use CAT for short. And then we'll go to the categories name in the collection and we're going to do the same thing and we're going to give it the exact same value. It has to be exactly the same. Now, this is connected to this, so this is great. Now, finally, we want to set up this view all button so that we want to have a button that views all the blog posts. And this will basically be a clear button. So it's going to clear all the search options that we put in. So we're going to copy this attribute. We're going to go to this view all. Now, let's see where we're going to add it. It's on the link block. I want this link block to clear all the filters. So this link block, we're going to give it the attribute of clear so cms filter element attribute clear value clear let's now publish and see how this works out all right so now if we click on one of the categories you can see that we're getting some items so in this case here in the in-ear headphones we're not getting any items because there are none of these categories but we don't want to leave this empty we want to perhaps showcase an empty state or something like that and uh, as you can see also the view all is showing all the all the categories all the blogs so that's great now let's see how we can create this empty state let's go back to our project and here we can add a new div block so we can go and add another div block here and perhaps we're going to style this to be 500 max width it's going to be centered and we're going to name it to be empty state div Inside it, we're going to add a tie heading and then perhaps a text block. Here we'll say, oops, we don't blocks from this category yet, but we will have some, all right? And perhaps we're going to center everything here, give it some padding, maybe 24 on all sides. And then let's make it white. It's white. Give it 24 maybe some box shadow or whatever, anything, just to have this uh, look different. We can see if we hide this part. So if we hide this part, this is how it's going to look. Now, this empty state uh, needs to have an attribute, of course. So we go back to our CMS filters and we can see that I want this div block to be the empty state of the list. So we're going to copy this attribute. We'll go back here and we will give it to the entire div block. That is the empty state. So this is called empty empty great now of course it's not going to show unless the empty state is empty so let's see that so now if we go to the live version see that it's not there unless we go to i think this was it so here it's an empty state it's like oops it's not working one last thing maybe you want to add an active state so i can know which category i'm on as well we can do that so let's do that let's go back to our project so now to add filters we're going to go back to the documentation to the finsuite documentation we're going to scroll through to active class so we need active class and here it uh, describes or explains how you can install this now in our case we're gonna we're using it on a radio label so it's the label that has the identifier and it will be added to the parent checkbox so let's see how that is done so let's copy this attribute let's go back to the project now go to the label now I'm just gonna remove this bold so that uh, they're all normal I don't know why it's bold and then we'll go to settings and uh, we'll go to custom attribute now here is our field identifier we're gonna add the new attribute which is active now, the value here can be anything can be the class name that we're gonna set up now so let's call it is active it can be again anything it can be active can be uh, current so let's go back now to the parent element and here we'll need to add a class is active so we'll add it as a combo class so we just write is active i already have this set up but um, that's basically it so when it's active it's changing the color of the of the text so if we hover you can see it changes the color of the text and gives us underline so let's also bring that so if we go to the hover state here we can see that the things in blue are the ones that are active in the hover state. So whatever is in blue here is the hover state changes. So we have the color and we have this underline with uh, two pixels width. And uh, we can apply the same to our is active class. We'll go here and we give it 
the color that is uh, primary 600. So now the is active class is basically the same as the hover class. So let's publish and see how that works out. Now, of course, you would want to have this backed up somewhere, perhaps in the style guide, so that uh, the is active class is always a combo class of this primary um, style that you have. Sometimes you might go to the style selector and clean the styles and any combo classes that are not used, in this case, they are not technically used here, so they get deleted. So it's always good to have a backup of these combo classes extras that you use JavaScript or use other external features. Let's go back to our live version. So if we go back to our live version, let's refresh. And now if we click on one of them, you can see I'm getting the empty state. I'm getting the active here. Everything is working great. If you're liking this type of content, do consider subscribing to the channel. I have a lot more in store for you. See you in the next one.